Welcome to the Across the Spoilerverse podcast. I'm your host, Greg. Greg Alba is my name now. And I'm joined here by uh, someone else who has the same name, Greg Alba 2. It's my evil variant from Across the Spoilerverse. What we're going to talk about today, what's on the agenda? Well, man, we got so much to talk about. We got box office bombs today, Greg Alba number one. Mm. And we also got Legend of Zelda movie up reportedly being in development. Some DC announcements like Batman Brave and the Bold Superman Legacy. We got shenanigans to go through, my Shenanigan. friend. I like well, what's that. the first thing you want to talk about, man? Um, Well, it's been not really part of the agenda, but just something that I feel like we have to talk about in general about the channel. Ooh. So Jared's left. Um, we ended up get we got no. Jar, I was going to make a joke about getting rid of them there, but I don't want to make light of the situation. Uh, the the guys kind of basically Jared's decided to take a step back, um, which is totally understandable. I mean, when when I hired him, it was just as I had had my twins, and I was kind of unsure exactly what was happening. Um, and I, I just thought, you know, I need someone else on board here because it's going to, I don't know if I can do everything. He's came on. He's, I think he's done an absolutely brilliant job with the channel. Um, if you watch his Mario breakdown, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's very demanding. Um, and, and one thing that I said to Jared at the start was, I don't want you to drop all of your channels and what you're doing as well because he's, he's got a really big TikTok following. Um, he's, he runs his own YouTube channel. And I know sometimes when hosts get brought on board, that they're put under an exclusive contract. So it's like you have you just work here. Um, this is your job. Whereas I didn't really want to be like that. Um, I wanted to give the the guys, you know, say you you work with us, but you can you find to go off and do your own thing. If there's a video that you want to make yourself on your own channel, that's fine to do it. Now, Jared has. I mean, it didn't give me the full reason. Um, but I do kind of feel like. You know, we were constantly putting, not like forcing things on him, but he, he has got a lot on his plate. Um, he's, he's got a contract with Roku. Um, I know that. And obviously he's running his own stream. He's, he's running his own stream YouTube program. channel as well. Yeah, he's running a streaming <laughs> service behind, <laughs> behind yeah. my back. Yeah, he's, uh, he's that's how he got so many spoilers. But I don't know why I said streaming service there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so... It got to a point, I think, where he just kind of reflected on everything. Um, he put a statement out on Twitter saying, you know, he was just taking a step back for personal and um, personal reasons, basically. Um, but you you could follow him on certain things, and I I didn't want to pry too much. I mean, like I said, you know, he he has worked really hard for the channel. Um, he's helped me out a lot. You know, there's not there's not any bad blood between us. Um, he's actually so so what we've done is. I've said to him, look, more than happy to have you back whenever you want. Um, we Obviously, I know you don't want to be working at Kevin Spoilers full time. You've got your own stuff that you want to be doing. You don't want this demanding three job thing that you've got at the moment, which I, I mean, I understand that as well, um, because, you know, he's got a thing with Roku. He's got his own TikTok and he's got us, which looking at what we do it is very demanding all the time like that mario video if you watch it bloody hell it's absolutely crazy and if he had to drop something out of those three things i can totally understand why i thought you know heavy spoilers is a bit full-on i don't want to do it anymore um so what i've said to him is why don't you just do some freelance stuff you know if there's ever a, a like there's, there's two films coming out in the same week coming up and i spoke to him yesterday and was saying look do you want to cover these things um yeah I'll, I'll cover one thing you cover the other and then we'll, we'll work something out uh so it just kind of keeps him around it's not the the farewell we haven't had him taken out into the woods and murdered you know what i mean for betraying all the secrets uh but it's just kind of something he said he needed to do you know so yeah but honestly best of luck to the guy as well uh, i am really grateful for all the work that he's put in so yeah not really a, a beef thing but go check the guy's channel out on jbook studios on youtube and twitter and just give him some support you know give him some kind words and i know the the comments sometimes got to him and unfortunately like the way he was talking about things again i didn't want to pry too much but one of those things with youtube is it's very difficult to um be like oh just ignore the comments because they can sometimes get to you and i even went to yeah. people 
at what culture and said look i've brought a new host on board um sometimes they get nasty comments is there any way to avoid this is there something i can set up to handle these things and they just said unfortunately that's just the way things play out and you know i i really did i really do believe in jared i did i believe in him for the channel um but he just looking at things you know he didn't feel like it was right for us and we're lucky that i've kind of hit a point as well where it was the twins are all settled now you know they're, they're going to nursery or kindergarten as it's called in the u.s uh so my day's not as manic as it was i can go back to treating this like a full-time job and yeah just just keep pumping out mediocre videos all the time and start a podcast as well uh but yeah no no bad blood there at least on my end i don't know if he's been slagging me off and going that guy who's a complete moron all the time being a, a dickhead but yeah d wish him all the best and thank him for the for his service i'll call it because uh he's helped us out a lot his yellow jackets coverage as well was really good he's done lots of lots of good things at the channel you um, can now and, catch uh, his videos here at real rejects so <laughs> yeah. he's gonna be kicking ass left and right <laughs> with reactions yeah now. and you know what was a bit sad some of the comments when i i wrote like i wrote a pinned comment saying oh this is a huge thank you to jared and, and like for all his work on the channel and some of the comments were like oh i was just starting to like jared as well and i'm like you son of a bitches where where, where, where <laughs> were you six months earlier. ago <laughs> yeah but yeah like, like i said we've we've kind of worked something out where he's not fully going to be gone um if if i can get him involved in in other ways then more than happy to have him back and and just talking about stuff but yeah farewell goodbye well rest love in peace you. Jared. you were a yeah, good man lovely bub lovely r.i.p pour one out for the fallen soldiers but yeah all the best all the well best i'm going to transition us now after that really sad drama heavy story you just told us mm. about jared unfortunately because there's other drama we got to talk about today paul and that yep. is movies continue to most likely bomb at the box office big movie i feel like that's the yeah. theme of the last couple of years everything yeah. bombing <laughs> everything bombs and you know we've heard the reports about little mermaid that everyone in the world is racist and mm. especially china's that was crazy were racist and that's why little mermaid is bombing um, yeah that's that a, we got that, that, no that, please that's like a racist thing to say though because i was reading that thinking that the headline is saying china like little mermaid bombs in korea and china because of racists and I'm i like, know it's so is that aggressive. not a bit is that not a bit racist saying that <laughs> yeah. they're racist yeah. that's the only reason why because it's just a bunch of yeah. racists over in korea and china it is the way it comes across who is that is that variety yeah. who said that was it variety or hollywood reporter think, one of those things. yeah i think it was hollywood reporter don't, we're probably slandering a, a perfectly upstanding outlet right now, but it was one of those. But yeah, I was reading that thing, and that's a bit kind of you're you're doing the exact same thing that you're accusing them of doing. Yeah. Maybe maybe people in China, if I was Chinese, right, might not have grown up watching The Little Mermaid. But even if I did, yeah, watching what I'm gonna call a, a pretty clear corporate cash grab, a live action remake of something from mm -hmm. another country in another language, I'm not going to be like massively on board going to see it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like if there was some anime movie that was all in Japanese, big hit in Japan, not really a massive hit over here, and they said they're doing a live action remake of it. You know, I might go see it. Did Ghost in the Shell do well over here? Fair enough. It had a Asian actress <laughs> Scarlett Johansson in it. Uh, but yeah, that, I mean, that didn't do massive numbers either. I don't think, you know, that. Let's be honest, these live action remakes, they're not exactly the pinnacle of filmmaking and you shouldn't be guilt tripping people and calling them racist just because, you know, they don't want to go see your American westernized thing that probably isn't as, you know, embedded in that culture as you think yeah. it should be. Uh, like, I don't all, think. Sorry, yeah. in all fairness, I don't really keep up fully with the rhetoric, the cultural rhetoric around it, because I, I remember that. You know, the the last thing that comes to mind for me is when they had um, John Boyega removed from posters. Mm. I believe was yeah. that China when that happened. So yeah, that was maybe China, there yeah. is a cultural thing that I I'm just not that endowed with to really speak on. Uh, but mm. the the headline of how it comes across, I feel like lately, you know, Variety and Hollywood Reporter they have been leaning a little bit more drama heavy when it comes to stuff yeah. to get their clicks more than usual. 
and yeah. especially with Little Mermaid, which, you know, again, the after the pandemic, especially what Disney did with their films, a lot of us just kind of go, yeah. let's just wait for it to come out on stream. It'll be out in like 40 days. Let's just wait. <laughs> you know, like we don't exactly. really need to see this. Yeah, I, th I think it's, I mean, obviously that, you know, whenever something like this is announced, we're not downplaying that there are racist people who will just criticize it and mm -hmm. come out and, and give it backlash. Mm -hmm. But also saying that you can't, you you know, you can't expect countries to have to go and see this stuff just because it bombs there doesn't mean you know that they're racist yeah uh, to me at least well you know, as a white man but yeah the, you speak the, for the us man. yeah <laughs> speak for thanks, the world. thanks guys i'm officially the spokesman um, well but yeah yeah it's i think in the states it's not like massively huge out here either uh it's big yeah. it's better here than it has been overseas haha -ha. um i love that mm. however it's still not like this massive sensation that they were hoping it would be even out here in the states uh so yeah yeah i'm not i, I don't feel like it's solely that I mean, it's a factor though i mean there, there's definitely that can't we know that camp exists like we see it all the time on the yeah. internet and we know it exists 100 yeah, percent. yeah but it's not, i don't think it's enough to make a break a billion dollar movie you know yeah. what i mean oh definitely i think definitely. either way you know if you remove that camp completely or if you say you added that camp on i don't think it's massively shifting the box office numbers you know to me I can totally see why Little Mermaid, a live action Disney remake, didn't do all that well. Now, yeah. some have in the past, obviously, but we are hitting a point now where these live action remakes are getting very, very repetitive. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to just become, once when they announce it, I'm just like, all oh, right, here's another one. They're just kind of burning through their back catalog, scraping the barrel as much as they can. And yeah, if the movie's good, I'm sure it is good, but you. You can't expect people to go out in droves to see The Little Mermaid because there's always going to be people who just aren't that interested. M maybe they grew up with it, but they're older now. They're not like us who collect hundreds and thousands of Funko Pops. They right. kept their childhood in their childhood, and they're not as interested to go see stuff. Yeah. So we'll pull, yeah. up, the, uh, we'll pull up a review for it. Yeah, oh, it's, uh, it's very bad. Okay, we'll <laughs> not pull up that one. I'm only kidding. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's you always notice this with... Um, when films bomb, they they always kind of come up with a reason for why stuff's not doing well. well and it, uh, yeah, it'll be fine on stream. I'm gonna hit streaming; it'll be fine. And they really want Disney Plus to succeed. But speaking of Disney, we also got okay. ourselves Indiana Jones and the Dial yeah. of Destiny. And I feel really sad for this movie. We talked about this yeah. we, when we launched this. It was one of the first things we talked about was the terrible three weeks review. ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> back in the day. And when we launched this, but right now it is over the five day holiday opening weekend predicted yep. to only make 60 to $70 million. And this movie yeah. cost like so much more than that <laughs> to be able yeah. to, this is really, really not great in a heavy competition season. And I don't feel the review, I, you know, I, I'm constantly asking the question to myself of does the general audiences who don't follow movie news care what stuff like rotten tomatoes has to say yeah because uh, i don't i don't do. think they do how mm. i think they i think it matters some people can be affected by it but i don't get the impression it's gonna have because it's a long movie too isn't it like two and a half hours i don't feel like it's gonna yeah. have a great word of mouth uh just based off of the conversation but when i go on twitter there have been people who have now seen screenings post cans film, film festival and who are like, I don't know what these critics are talking about. This movie is actually a lot of fun. So yeah. maybe yeah. it'll go up. Uh, but th right now, the numbers are not looking super exciting. And, and you know, like I like the, I was looking forward to it just because I like Indiana Jones. But at the same time, it, it does look like, you know, just typical Indiana. It doesn't look like they're doing anything that different with, with the franchise. Yeah. I love Indiana Jones. Yeah, I've got all mm -hmm. the, bought the movies multiple times. But let's be honest, Crystal Skull kind of killed everything. Talked about this on the podcast. The, the final Indiana Jones film for me is always going to be the third one. And it mm -hmm. has the perfect ending. It's what is the best Hollywood ending? Riding off into the sunset. That's what happens at the end of that film. Boom. Perfect. No need to do anymore. They brought back Crystal Skull. Terrible. 
and now they're expecting people almost is it it's going to be over 10 years at least at this point isn't it what oh, yeah, yeah. yeah was crystal Definitely. skull sort of mid noughties um but yeah like you're not going to recapture an audience eight with crystal skull so it's, it's going on 15 years yeah, that's crazy. And I, and I remember us making old jokes about Harrison Ford back then and being like, this old guy, Indiana Jones. Um, so yeah, it's not... I, what, like, I am excited to see it, but I can totally understand why people don't. And again, it goes back to this thing of you cannot expect people to just go and see your movie. You have to really sell it, really market it. And I don't think they've done that very well, Where whether it's the... You know, the Rotten Tomatoes score, it, that lukewarm applause at Cannes that only lasted five minutes, which they made a big deal out of. And just the, the things in general around the movie, um, it's just not, I can totally understand why people aren't excited. And it, parts of it have leaked and that caused a lot of drama as well. And yeah, it, it, it kind of feels like we had that perfect Indiana Jones trilogy in protest. I, I almost feel like some people are like, I'm just not going to watch it because I don't, I don't like Crystal Skull and I wish Disney would stop just remaking stuff over and over again and actually come up with some new ideas. Some Because you can't keep wheeling out Harrison Ford every 15 years and being like, yes, he's back. You're going to you're gonna love the guy. Like, I love the guy. One of the coolest guys ever. But my kids didn't grow up with that. Fair enough, they're two years old or something. But they didn't grow up yeah. with Harrison Ford. So they haven't got that attachment. Now, one of the funniest things I read in the Deadline article, unintentionally funny, was them saying that though it was, though the, it seemed bad, the box office, it was actually the franchise's second highest opening weekend prediction. Oh my God. I'm like, yeah, mate, because most of the <laughs> other movies were released in the 80s oh, yeah. when $80 million was like a massive, massive deal. Yeah. That was like mm. Avengers Endgame money. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, you can see how they're kind of trying to spin it and be like, well, it's it's this franchise's second best, but if you adjust things for inflation, it's going to get flattened. Um, and it's a shame because I, like, I wanted this to do well, Je not even just for the whole Harrison Ford thing, James Mangold as well. Uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant director. But yeah, what is Kathleen Kennedy going to get fired over this, Greg? I don't think we'll ever get rid of kathleen kennedy paul i feel like she's around she is, yeah. permanently until she's dead she will she see. even the then sin. they'll find a way they'll find a way to yeah. keep her she'll be she'll yeah. force nose herself into this whole situation yeah. she's never getting cloning never gonna leave. oh my god i would love that be the first clone. somehow kathleen returned <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> so, everything's a joke now uh, speaking yeah. of jokes, we got uh, the Flash, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which is continuing to have um, an interest. I, I, uh, I you've seen it. it. You don't. Yeah, I've seen it. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. It definitely had flaws for me. Did a whole review on it. It was. It, I'm going to see it again actually today uh, because we got to do our Who bragging about it? He's seen it twice before it. everyone else. Because on our debut podcast, I wasn't able to go, so I wanted redemption mm. for myself. And I'm going to two screenings. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fun. I, Ezra Miller, I think, is great in the movie. To to yeah. my surprise, I was like, Ezra is pretty great in this film. Uh, wonky CGI, like you've heard from everyone. Although I'll say that it's not as truly bothersome as when you just watch a clip there's a bit of a it's kind of like a, a a more hot i'm not i'm not just being nice about it. It, it, it because the movie just sets out to have fun you could tell that's the overall intention and vibe that it's easier to forgive the wonky seat that's why i think a lot of critics have been able to forgive the cgi even though everyone has that complaint is because the movie is just genuinely setting out to have fun that you can actually it's a, it's a weird experience where you can look back past a lot of the bad yeah. CGI because the film is but just wanting to have that, fun. Yeah. But when you just release clips online, then it's like, oh man, this movie's a disaster when you when you just watch them isolated. Yeah. Uh, but I thought this movie would actually track better, and Me I too. I I think maybe yeah. because some people are feeling like it's not super relevant, maybe they just don't care anymore because. You know, this, the, it is, it is coming. I don't know what the conversation is for regular audiences. I have completely, I am completely out of tune with what general audiences think and feel for this, like outside of the movie sphere. 
that we populate. I have no idea why this is not tracking as well. I thought the trailers were great. You would think the nostalgia Brilliant. for Michael Keaton would probably work uh, a little bit of magic, perhaps. Uh, but seeing that it's expected to not do great, and, and I even think in our movie sphere, you know, James Gunn, he was he was trying to make it sound like it's really important. Like, like this yeah. is the start. Real, this is actually the real start. This is when the reset happens. I didn't really not get that feeling yeah. um, after watching the movie that this is the the official restart that is going to segue us into the DCU. I, I actually didn't get that impression. And I've talked with others who didn't really feel that way. Uh, but needless to say, I, I am a bit surprised that it's tracking as low as it is because, I mean, the Flash show, regardless of how much it went downhill with audiences, um, it still it's was beloved. a nine season hit. <laughs> it was still around yeah. for nine seasons. And this to me is like the cinematic version of a it's a bit predictable the movie especially if you've read flashpoint and if you've seen like some seasons of the flash it's a bit predictable uh but to me this was like oh the cinematic version of what i've seen on what cw tries to accomplish yeah so i thought it would just do, go over a little better do you think people are just sick of the multiverse in general i mean what what the weird thing about the flash is is that this was the multiverse movie that was supposed to come out first um, but obviously, you know, delays happened, directors got fired, so on and so forth. But since then, we've obviously had No Way Home, which was a massive multiverse movie, mm -hmm. uh, big success, bringing back all the Spider-Men, Into the Spider-Verse, Across the Spider-Verse, Multiverse of Madness, everything, everywhere, all at once. There's been multiple multiverse movies at this point, and a lot of the same beats happen it, across those multiverse movies i'm talking about alternate versions of characters that turn out to be evil haven't seen the flash yet so i don't know if that's the case uh but i'm guessing something like that will happen uh there's also don't give it away greg there's also other thing you know there's you bring him back actors from the past um right. to play in nostalgia it's obviously happened in no way home multiverse of madness like had patrick stewart in and stuff Sharon Carter and so on. Um, are they just kind of are people? You know, multiverse movies are actually getting very predictable, and there's something that shouldn't really be predictable. And maybe audiences are getting to the point where it's like, oh, another multiverse movie. Like I, I haven't seen the Flash as I've said, but I've heard there's lots of plot elements in it that are actually very similar to what happens in Across the Spider Verse thematically, yeah. at least. Um, but there are some key plot points that are in both and with that releasing two weeks ago doing it really well maybe people are just kind of burned out on that i think also it's kind of been over marketed um and when you're constantly seeing tv spots all the times trailers i just stop watching them and it kind of kills the hype for me because i'm no longer excited about it like it's even starting to happen with secret invasion they obviously released that five minute clip the other day um didn't watch yeah. it because i and then they, they've been dropping TV spots all the time. And it's kind of like, I'm excited. I went from being, oh, I'm excited to see what the next, you know, I can't wait to see it to almost being like, all right, well, I, I kind of can gauge what my response to this is now because I've seen so many of the scenes and how they play out rather than how they're in a trailer, which is when they're a montage. I think when you view a scene isolated on its own, it's almost you, you grasp what the the show is and or the film is and it kind of almost kills the hype for you because you're now well aware of what the tone is you're now well aware of what, how they're handling things and i saw the michael keaton clip the other week um with barry sat talking to bruce in the kitchen where he's got mm -hmm. the the long hair and the beard they released that online it's like a, a two minute clip um and i, I just turned it off halfway through because i'm like this is kind of killing my excitement because i'm seeing everything here so I think over-marketing it as well. Um, obviously, you've got all the controversy with Ezra Miller. Personally, I don't really think that's going to affect the box office either way because I don't think that it's... I don't know. I don't. My grandma doesn't know who Ezra Miller is, you know what I mean? My People who would go and see this film that from the general audience, I'm not sure they're that aware. They've probably seen headlines and stuff, but they've not really delved into the the full thing like we would have see when we see it popping up on our timeline all the time um so i don't think that would have massively affected the box office i think dc in general is kind of in a weird place at the moment like i was not expecting shazam to bomb as hard as it did mm -hmm. and 
I I feel like Aquaman 2 is going to not do very well either. And I think people are just kind of, they're a bit weird on the franchise at the moment. I mean, I've said this to you personally, but the Flash as a character in the DCEU is coming off the back of what was released theatrically, which is Justice League, a, a movie that wasn't that well received. You know, he's a minor character in that. He, he's coming from basically a movie that wasn't that well received in theaters. Yeah. Sure, sure, they had the Snyder Cut, but he's coming from that and also a dead universe that people aren't really sure of. That's all taking part in this thing that, you know, they're not that invested in because they haven't seen the last couple of movies. And yeah, it's it's a weird thing to kind of have an entire film built around this character. So I can see why they've been pushing Michael Keaton as hard as they have been. But is Michael Keaton as popular as Batman? You know, we grew up with him. Obviously, we have an attachment to him. But again, it sees you wheeling out your, your grandpa's heroes and making kids be like, you have to like this guy, don't you? You do you bloody love him. It's like, I haven't seen, you know, my, my Batman was Christian Bale is what I imagine they're saying. So yeah, it's, I don't know if it's, we'll see how it goes, but the tracking isn't looking good. And considering everything that's happening, I don't know if DC's like in a really good, pl- I think the DCU might even be potentially dead on arrival when it, when it drops. Um, I mean, I hope James Gunn works his magic, but yeah, it's, it's in a weird place at the moment. You know, I, I think the Flash movie though will have surprisingly really good word of mouth. I, I think, I don't yeah. know if the word surprising is it. I think they will have good word of mouth because this movie is genuinely so much fun that despite mm-hmm. whatever, you know, storytelling, editing CGI flaws that the movie has, uh, I think that the film itself will have such a good word of mouth that people will want to go see this. I mean, I've talked with, I, I was actually at a barbecue the other day. I, I like to hang oh, out yeah. with friends who Rugged. don't, who don't like, you know, do anything YouTube or movie related. I, I just, you know, normal people. And, and someone did bring up as everyone, I'm, I'm the guy who they're like, so Greg, what you, what's coming out? You know, what do you recommend? Since you got the YouTube channel and uh, the flash came, came up and like, they kind of, they, they do, they still like go to movies, but mm-hmm. I was talking with these guys and they were so confused by the flash trailer. They, they were actually like, wait, I'm confused. I thought Ben Affleck was the was Batman. Now he's not Batman. Yeah. I thought Mike. Why, why is Michael Keaton? Is, it's Michael Keaton. Like it was. It became such a conversation where I was trying to explain to them <laughs> like what's yeah. what's kind of happening, and that was probably the most telling part to me about what, how general audiences might be receiving this because we did get Ben Affleck as Batman, and then we got the Batman, and now yeah. we have Michael Keaton returning. And I really don't know how exciting that might be for general audiences because I don't feel like some people feel like, yeah, Michael Keenan's the one I grew up with, but he's not often heralded, at least in the conversations I run into, he's not often heralded as the one who is the best one of them all. And I think a lot of that has to do with our association now with actor you cast and their physicality matching them. Like there is this yeah. one scene in the movie that I thought was funny without it supposed to be funny and it's not really a spoiler um it's after post post a fight scene there's a fight scene that batman has that is great it's a fantastic fight scene and a lot of martial arts and stuff that was not in the trailer a lot of martial arts and my mind is going that's definitely a stunt double like there's no way in hell this is michael keaton doing like hey this shit this guy's so freaking old there's no way this is and and then but but when you watch like christian bale or ben affleck you believe that could be them underneath the suit and there's a moment where, you know, Michael Keaton is like stitching in his arm up after getting an injury. And he's just oh, like Batman returns. Yeah. And he's just so skinny, though. <laughs> like He's just skinny right. ass dude. Whereas, you know, Ben Affleck, whereas like uh, he, when he's in the suit, he's meant to be looking all buff and, and all that. And I started wondering if there might be a subconscious association with believability that might also be applicable to kind of circle it back to. Um, why we might not be as excited for Harrison Ford to be returning in the role of Indiana Jones when after yeah. you've seen, you know, Harrison Ford in uh, The Force Awakens or even Blade Runner 2049 when he's reprising roles, you can see like this guy kind of moves like, an, like an, a much older dude now, like great for his age, but he's definitely an old guy now. And when you see Indiana Jones, that's a character who needs to be a lot more physical and hands-on more than Han Solo 
more than whatever uh, Deckard is in, in Blade Runner. And I, I wonder how much of that messes with, like i'm talking about like on a subconscious level of our believability and tangibility and the excitement that we would have to seeing these actors reprise their roles you know what i mean yeah yeah definitely um i can totally see that killing the illusion as well i mean michael keaton was never the biggest guy anyway mm -hmm. but you were going from like batman v superman where you have a scene of ben affleck working out and he's absolutely mm -hmm. he's crazy i think they were talking about how they cgi'd that or whatever but it, it made you think he looks great, but I I would like to believe in my heart of hearts that the guy got in that shape. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so I can. I mean, I, I can totally see that. And again, we're kind of pushing on uh, onto our kids what we found uh, like good. There's a great line in Fight Club about how the boomers kind of just took their childhood and then forced it onto the '90s guys, and we're sort of doing the same thing where we're taking our childhood and being like, "Come on, kids, you have to like this, otherwise you're racist." um yeah. and it's kind of yeah it's kind of a weird thing but I, I mean i think the flash will do better than the predictions again these are predictions we we'll have to they're not what the final box office is going to be they're just analysts who've taken a look at things and these things can be wrong across the spider verse was projected to do a lot lower than it did i think transformers rise of the beasts as well was predicted to do pretty well but it's completely smashed that box office um, Little Mermaid was expected to do better, and it's done worse. So you know they're they're not always right. That they're, they're basically rough ballpark figures, judging by certain things that they take into account. But the Flash, I I think it will have good word of mouth. I mean that's basically what the marketing of the movie has been. There's been so many people coming out reacting on social media, going it's good. Stephen King coming out going it's good. Tom Cruise apparently going it's good, and. And obviously they can't use Ezra in the marketing, so they've had to get creative with it. And it's yeah. kind of weird to see the entire marketing is built around people going, it's actually all right, you know? It's actually yeah. quite good. Well, and that's the about, entire marketing of the thing. Did you hear about Ezra is, is, I mean, at the time of us, this being uploaded, the premiere would have already happened. But did you hear about Ezra is actually going to the premiere, but Ezra yeah. can't do any interviews when at the premiere. Which, yeah. It's a, it's such yeah. a fine like this movie has the weirdest marketing because they are trying to promote it in all fronts, but I mean it makes sense that they would have Ezra go there, uh, but because it's like if, if Ezra's not there, then everyone's just going to talk about oh Ezra Miller didn't attend the premiere and then it looks bad. Yeah. So you need Ezra to be there, but then if Ezra's being interviewed, everyone's going to ask about the controversies, you know, and and then even recently Michael Shannon um, has come out with. I, I think I have the quote right here somewhere. Yeah, All right. quote, right. Let's let's get the quote. Let's get the quote. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull yeah. it up. Michael Shannon throwing. I know shade. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and he was a part of it that I was disappointed in. It was something oh, that was really, like, yeah, yeah. It was like nothing oh, like <laughs> in the movie. It was it was really uh, it was it was disappointing to to see how he wasn't used. And then what he came out and said was he expressed his own dissatisfaction with Zod's arc in the film. He said, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't quite satisfying for me as an actor. These multiverse movies are like somebody playing with action figures. It's like, here's this person, here's that person. And they're fighting. It's not quite the in-depth character studies situation that I honestly felt man of steel was. I mean, he says some nice yeah. things like Ezra's great. And so, you know, people will be excited to see it. Uh, it's but, actually quite good. It was good. It's a good movie. Tom Cruise likes yeah. it. But you got like Michael Shannon before the movie's release being like, yeah. Yeah, it's not really satisfying, even though they've been putting me in all the trailers. <laughs> like they're really yeah. pushing me front and center. That might be another thing. Too. It is a fascinating, I, I think we spent so much time on it because we've been trying to dissect why people aren't excited for it. Whereas like, you know, Aquaman also came out of Justice League and Justice League was not loved. Uh, but Aquaman was a huge hit, but it felt so different and distinct compared to Justice League, whereas Flash seems to be heavily reliant on, like, if you liked Man of Steel, watch this. Yeah. If you, if you like uh, Michael Keaton, watch. It seems to be relying on the past, and it really yeah. feels like if you don't have that big reverency for the past, then you might not care about this. Uh, when really it's not just a movie. It, yeah, it is a lot of like DC's greatest hits, the vibes. It does feel that way a lot of the time, but in a fun fan service way. Yet I am starting to understand why maybe it might not be tracking as strong. And especially yeah, when I mean, your actors are not really super excited about it. 
this movie. I mean, yeah. If he's coming out and I mean that's this happened on Shazam as well. There was a lot of stuff where I remember David Sandberg when they said something, he was like, Oh yeah, kind of expected this to be honest. And this was on like the second mm-hmm. weekend when it was clearly bombing. Um and it it is quite a weird thing. I think just DC in general is just such a Personally, I don't think James Gunn should have announced any of the upcoming slate until no. after these movies were done. I, I really think there was no need to play his hand and say that this was all going to be dead soon. Absolutely no need to say that at all. No need to get rid of mm-hmm. any of the actors. Um, Just keep it to yourself. We don't need to know. We can speculate all we want, but let these movies release and then say what's happening, especially because Superman Legacy, that's not coming out for a good couple of years. So there was no need to come out and be like, uh, those stupid movies uh, come in. Make, make, make sure you go see them. They're actually quite good. Um, so yeah, that, I think they just played the entire thing wrong from the start. And there's so much instability with DC as well. One minute, you know, Michael Keaton's going to be the Nick Fury figure of the DCEU right. going oh forward. Oh my God, I forgot then, about that. <laughs> I forgot yeah, I've, I've, I mean, I've... I've started putting together my breakdown on the film um, as much as I can and just kind of looking back over the past two years. It, so what I, what I do when I do a breakdown, I'll like go and research exactly how the movie was made and what's kind of built up towards it. And I, I totally forgot all this stuff where Michael Keaton was like marketed as the, the Nick Fury thing because we have to talk about there's a certain thing that we won't spoil, but I've had it spoiled for me that happens at the end of the movie. And there was an an original ending that we have seen photos from because they were shown in public. So I wanted to talk about what the new thing is and what was happening originally. And and that whole Nick Fury thing. And then, of course, Michael Keaton was going to appear on Batgirl. um, And he was going to be the Batman who brought everything together whilst Robert Pattinson played the younger version off in another universe. Mm -hmm. So even just stuff like that. And then obviously you have the Snyder Cut where it seems like, oh, crap, they're bringing Zack back. Oh, amazing. And then they're like, the next day, they're like, actually, that's a culdy sack. It's a culdy sack. We're not going anywhere with it, but thanks for all your money. And then Black Adam post credit scene getting Henry Cavill to announce that he is back as Superman. And then the next week being like, oh, actually, I've been not getting brought forward. Um, Just so, it's so weird. And none of this stuff needed to be made public until they were like three months away from the release of Superman Legacy and could market it there. And what you're sitting on is so many movies that are dead on arrival now. Obviously, Aquaman 2 is going to be coming in December. We've still got Blue Beetle this year, which, I mean, they're going to have to do a hell of a lot of marketing for that to get it in the the general audience's mind. And yeah, DC is just in such a weird place. And it's all because of mismanagement. The yep. Batman 2 is going to do well. Obviously, Joker 2 is going to do well. But this, you know, even with that, though, you're kind of pushing these other movies that aren't connected to anything. And it's like, these are the films we should go see. And this weird thing where they don't know what they're doing week to week. Like, do I have another 10 years in me? Man of Steel released 2013. It's been 10 years of this mismanagement crap. I don't know if I have another 10 years in me, which is what James Gunn has said that his plan for the DCU is going to be. It's going to be another 10 years. Do I have 20 years in me altogether from Man of Steel to, yeah. to whatever's going to end up be, you know, coming down the line? Well, Possibly you, not, and I don't think a lot of people do. Well, you brought up Superman Legacy, and then before we started mm. recording, you mentioned that there was casting information about Superman Legacy. I, I didn't hear any of this yet. Not casting, yeah. Don't put casting in my mouth. But we're still going to put it or all over the spe- SEO and be yeah, like, a I mean, casting SEO, announcement. Man. But yeah, I mean, an announcement. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. exclamation, question mark, question mark, exclamation. Try to hide the question mark so that way we're not yeah. clickbaiting again. <laughs> yeah. clickbait if we put, it's not clickbait if you put a question mark. Yeah, you put a question yeah. mark, we're forming it as a question. It's not a statement. Yeah. yeah. But I remember, oh, yeah. What did you so hear? Did you, <laughs> yeah, so uh Daniel RPK has put out a scoop saying Superman Legacy can confirm they are casting these members of the authority. The Doctor, ah. Jack Orksmoor, and Engineer for Superman Legacy. Oh, building so, up the authority in Superman Legacy. That's smart. Yeah, so that's, that's what's smart. what yeah, that's what's been one of the big stories this week. Well, I say big, I mean to us it was. Mm-hmm. If you ask your uncle, he's probably got no idea what's going on and he's probably just kicking off uh, something else on Twitter. 
Um, so yeah, that the authority is going to be seeded into Superman Legacy, which, if you read the comics and you've seen them go head to head, it's good to start there. I think it is good to start with the authority this early because we know we're getting a movie, and they're they're a niche set of characters. So building them up now, I mean, I I used to get the authority comics. Don't know what happened to them, and for the last month. I've been tr- well, maybe even longer. The last two months, I've been trying to buy the graphic novels for them, and they're out of stock all the time. I've got them in my wish list, out of stock all the time on Amazon. Or if they do come into mm-hmm. stock for like one day, it's like sixty quid or something, and I'm not paying that. So yeah, it's uh, it's they've they've done good at hyping them up at least. Much as I've been ragging on DC for killing the hype. The authority, they're doing a good job. And what you need to, in case you don't know, they're basically the boys of yeah. DC. Boiled but, down but to the heroes, though, at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So you've got these kind of complex characters, you know, for, it's right up James Gunn's street, basically. I feel like he yeah. should be directing that one <laughs> and then someone yeah. else should be doing Legacy. Yeah. Superman is a weird choice for him. I, I must admit, I'm still unsure exactly on how he's going to handle it. Uh, I don't want to go hashtag fire James Gunn because that seems to be trending every day. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't have been my first choice to do a Superman. But yeah. we'll see. The guy, yeah. the guy is a great director and a great writer, so I, I can at least put my faith in that. Well, this with him doing Legacy, and then he has been hyping up the and the Authority is just not as well known. It is one of those yeah. groups that. It feels so, so much like a James Gunn pick, you know, like they're yeah, that is it, heroes yeah. and they're morally gray. They'd be perfect for James Gunn. So it, they could be my probably, it's probably going to be R rated their standalone, but this would be him doing, okay, I'm not just rebooting Superman. I am now showing my skill set to do cinematic universe building, something that Marvel, you know, fluctuates with, but has been credited as being like the pioneers and the ultimate maestros of having orchestrated that, which was cinematic universe building within their movies. And this would be like, I, I feel like um, creature commandos will be fun, but I don't know if that's going to be the one where we're, Oh, we're getting a tease for the future of the universe through this. It's going to be yeah, Superman it's legacy. Weird to start with that. Yeah, it is at the same time. It, you know, he has such a, a, a love for animated movies. Um, I mean, he yeah. even looked into the spider verse as his favorite comic book movie. I wonder if he was just doing that as a marketing ploy. So people will be like, Hey, he looks into the spider verse. So, you know, <laughs> creature commando is probably gonna be awesome. Uh, but I, I think for Superman legacy, the, this path is, is going to be an interesting one. And, and cause it doesn't sound like the, the authority could very well be like an antagonistic element in the film. But are they just going to be a cameo? Like, I wonder if there's going to be too much hype around the authority being established here in Superman Legacy when it's like, who's the main villain of of this? I've been hearing rumors of Brainiac being in here, but everything's just a rumor at this point. But sometimes the most reliable rumors are coming from the most reliable scoopers. So if Brainiac's in it, that'd be cool. That'd be awesome. I don't know. I'm excited for it. Yeah. James Gunn, whatever you say, we have to be careful because whatever we say, James Gunn's going to reply to exactly like right below this tweet when I yeah. post this episode out saying, you're wrong, you're a friggin' idiot. <laughs> and everyone will pile on us and be like, ah, they talk so much rubbish. They don't know anything. So we're not going to say anything's confirmed. We, yeah. don't know, we don't know anything. I don't even know my own name. Confirmed? So, question mark? Exclamation mark? Exclamation mark? That's how we're yeah. going to do it. We'll put question marks at the end. Yeah. Is China racist? <laughs> question mark? Question mark? Because be they China didn't see racist? the little question mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Move the is, but put China racist. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. Is, we're on the right path here. All right. And then, but also not just Superman legacy, um, Batman Brave and the Bold. Uh, the main rumor is that Andy Muschietti, which I'm not going to lie, I thought that seeing <laughs> this is going to make it seem like I had a big dislike for the way Batman was handled, which is not, it's not true. Um, but this, I thought that because I heard the rumors of Andy Muschietti directing brave and the bold before watching the flash. And mm-hmm. it seems likely that he would be the one to do it. So I, so one thing my eye was on the lookout for was let's see how he handles Batman. And I thought he did a fine job. It, it was fine for the movie. It's like, 
doesn't ultimately feel like Michael Keenan's entirely necessary. I sort of felt like some of the Ben Affleck stuff was weird. Like the specifically him as Batman, I thought was weird. His scene where he's just Bruce Wayne that they put in the trailers. That's a good scene. But his stuff as Batman, my biggest complaint about it was that it lost all sense of physicality and weight. Yeah. It was just like I've noticed that from the trailers. It's it's really noticeable. And then he's got this scene of dialogue where they're like on a freeway and it it just it looks silly. It, it looks really cartoony and it takes away a lot of the that that looming menace that Ben Affleck would bring to to the performance. It felt something like kind of out of Justice League. And at first I was like, is this because he's in the day? But then I remember that in Zack Snyder's Justice League, there are some daytime scenes with Ben Affleck Batman, and that does not feel goofy. But it felt yeah, goofy yeah. here. He did a good job with Michael Keaton, but that was really trying to, you know, uh, riff on what Tim Burton had already done and then put him in that lighting and shadow. So Muschietti is a good director, and I'm sure he'd do something different than The Flash. The Flash did not get me less excited to see what he would do with Brave and the Bold, but it definitely didn't get me more excited to see what he would do for Brave and the Bold. Um, that's, I mean, you did pretty, it. That's pretty dark. That's quite a dark movie. It tends to do um, dark stuff, yeah. And I, I think they've said Brave and the Bold's going to be based off Grant Morrison's run, which mm-hmm. is quite a colourful run. Uh, Frank, I want to say Frank quietly did the... Oh, I'm, I don't think he did, you know. I'm going to quickly Google it so I don't do make myself look stupid. Uh, edit this out, everyone. Batman, Omnibus 1, which... I'm, I'm, so, we'll... Uh, we'll so yeah, that is quite a colorful run anyway. Uh it's <laughs> Well, Brave and the Bolt's supposed Tony to Tony Daniel, yeah. that was it. <laughs> it has um, to be a little bit self aware. I mean, you're bringing in like a little kid who's gonna be robbing. <laughs> like you gotta yeah. you gotta have a sense of fun and self awareness. It's gotta really distinguish itself from Pattinson's Batman, which will be very dark and brooding and serious, and then to separate it within its own universe, the the main canon timeline. I think having that one yeah. be a little bit more fun makes sense. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm cool with this one being more colorful and fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, but from what you've said about the physicality, I think that is kind of a shame. It was Chris Burnham. Sorry, guys, I've let myself down. Was it Chris Burnham? It probably wasn't. You know, making this worse and worse. People are screaming <laughs> at the the TV and the the haters. Um, sorry, guys, I'm, I apologize for that. So what happened? So what I've seen from the trailers is that it looks like i don't know he's kind of bouncing off cars and stuff um and jumping around whereas when you compare that to the the warehouse uh, warehouse scene from batman v superman that felt very physical yeah that that really did oh i think it might have been chris burnham i'm back baby i'm back uh so yeah it's kind of i mean and just batman in daylight in general is is a bit weird to me but You know, I kind of feel like he's someone who should come out at night. If you've seen From, I basically think Batman should be like the monsters from From, Mm. where he's, you know, they do it great in the Dark Knight where the criminals are kind of moving around and then they see this signal in the sky. It's the the same way that Matt Reeves starts the Batman. Like, you think how good that opening scene at the start of the Batman is when Bruce is kind of talking about how they think he's hiding in the shadows. He is the shadows. Mm. That's what I think Batman should be. But, I mean, Muschietti getting this job as well also likely means that he's not going to be doing The Flash 2 because he, he'll be committed to this for for the next couple of years. Sure. And, you know, before the lead-up to the movie, they're talking about how they would want Ezra back for the sequel. Um, mm-hmm. But the fact that Annie Muschietti is going on to do Batman and Brave and the Bold, potentially, like, how can you have him back? Uh, for that if i don't like that to me it it's almost doesn't it, it kind of contradicts itself because you're hiring this guy to do batman brave in the bowl but we also want to do a flash sequel it, it's weird uh, to me you would kind of keep the director on for for one of those projects and work the sequels from there so i don't really in my heart of hearts i do feel like they're gonna let ezra go but they're just gonna do it in a way that I don't know. I mean, I mean, they they probably are seeing what the audience response is going to be. But if the you know if this movie bombs, um, I think they are going to put the blame on Ezra for it. And yeah, I think uh, I just don't know that 
though Warner Brothers is saying like, oh, we haven't really discussed what's happening with Ezra. With this much money involved, well, we're looking at a $300 million budget here. Mm -hmm. With that much money involved, they will have had conversations saying, probably at some point even saying, is it possible to reshoot the movie without Ezra? Like those conversations will of course come up. We even talked about it and we've got no stake in this film at all. So yeah, the, uh, we, we will see what happens, but the fact that they'd even be asking those questions shows to me that there's doubt in the minds of them. And I mean, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll see what Personally, happens. Personally, I would love it to do well. Our channels always do better when movies do well. We're not hate channels. We don't get hate clicks a lot of the time. Tends to be when a show's not doing well or a movie's not doing well, our videos don't do well. So praying that they do well, but we've just got to stay realistic with this stuff as well, guys. Yeah. yeah. Dislike button doesn't work anymore either. So unlucky, mate. You could have told us how you felt, you sucker. It works. It works, Paul. They just can't see how many dislikes there are, but we see them and I always <laughs> count them every time. One by one. One yeah. by one. <laughs> like, and I try to find There's 500 out. 500 dislikes now. Why? Yeah. They can't even see it. They just did it for me. <laughs> just for me to yeah. see the dislikes. Evil. It's like when you're driving along and you stick your fingers up under like the door. You know <laughs> what I mean? So the car next to you can't see it, but you're you're doing it. Yeah. It's basically that. It's just an energy you need to put out there. But <laughs> we yeah. got we got these D we talked so much about DC today. We gotta we gotta have a little bit of a power cleanser with a different IP. I think it's genuinely going through my mind now that I've made too many jokes about people being racists and that they're gonna get cropped out of context and we're gonna get cancelled. And Here. people aren't gonna get the joke because I'll be honest, my sense of humor is very, very difficult to get sometimes. Sometimes I will just say something really stupid. I don't mean it, guys, I promise. Just being careful. Whatever that drives that. more traffic to this podcast, Paul. If yeah, Cliff true. House will bring people here, and then you'll get defenders. That's the best part. Is people? That's will, the best bit. Yeah. And people ultimately like, yeah, you didn't hear the rest of the context, and then to hear the rest of the context, they'll have to hear the rest of the podcast, yeah. and then we win. And yeah. those people will indoctrinate themselves to me, and will purposely go out of their way to search my name on Twitter every single day just yeah. so they can argue with someone. I love those guys. Yeah. You know, I used to never understand how people got in cults. Like when I heard about Jim Jones, I used to think like, I just don't, I can't get my head around how someone would be that obsessed with someone else that they'd be willing to do something like that. And then I see what people are arguing about on Twitter sometimes. Like there'll be the most heinous thing revealed about someone and there'll be people who jump to their defense to defend them. And it's very strange. You can just see like this cult mentality being formed, mm -hmm. which I can't wait to weaponize against people who try and cancel me. So. Try your bloody best, mate. Ready the armada. Let's get it going. Mm. I'll be on that side with you. Yeah. Oh, but then I need to have you some will. things ready to go for when you really, truly get canceled, and then I got to speak out against you. Be like, yeah, you'll be know. just hosting the podcast by yourself. Yeah, I'm going to call real spoilers. I'm going to bring it back. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That's what oh. we're going to get canceled over. I'll this bring week. those three other guys over. <laughs> you know, still, yeah. I'll still get upload it on over. the heavy spoilers channel, but I'll still keep it here. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to talk briefly about this, Paul, if that's okay, as we were closing this out. Uh, this news excited me and also got me a tad worried, but also excited if they'd, if they'd pull it off. Uh, the Legend of Zelda movie is in development, mm. finally. This has been the most champion thing I've heard for, I'm sure you have too, for many, 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 many years. Because out of any Nintendo property that, I mean, people have talked about like Samus and Metroid Prime and all that. But I think out of any like pure Nintendo property, Legend of Zelda is the one that has lent itself most to having a proper cinematic adaptation. And yeah, it's like it'd be the same people who did like the super not not I don't know if it's the same filmmakers, probably not, but the same studio uh, who did Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh, my my one concern this is my literally my only concern is that if they decide to make it like a comedy or something like that you know if they just try yeah. to make it like silly and funny because legend of zelda can pull off something it'd be really cool if they did just some wild swing instead of trying to be like we got to find a way to segue legend of zelda to being part of our cinematic universe so they can cross over if they just did some like wild swing where they made something truly awesome badass epic um but the animated version of it like they're animated lord of the rings in a way 
Uh, that would be the dream scenario. And I feel like that's what most people will probably want. Like, can you have humor come from the character? Sure. Uh, but I just don't want it to become like an illumination film, basically. Yeah. I want it to be a, a truly like art epic film, and especially after like getting a movie like Across the Spider Verse. I think you can pull it off. So to me, you want basically, you want a Shadow of the Colossus movie with Link and Zelda, don't you? Badass. That's what I'm talking about, man. How cool yeah, would that be? Come on. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. That would be that, awesome. that, By Shadow of the Colossus, I mean that tone where it's everything sincere, taken very seriously. Mm -hmm. Not just memes and Easter eggs. You know, no one's going to be, like, sitting there. I'm I'm not going to be sitting there making an Easter egg video on it. I hope. I'm sure there will be Easter eggs, but I don't want it to be, like, the level of Mario where it's every single frame is 40 different things. I think hopefully they go in with the right tone and that will kind of make or break the film because it's not the same as making the Mario movie to me. Uh, they shouldn't be handling it like that. I want to see Majora's Mask. I want to see Ganon. I want to see Ganondorf. I want to see swords being pulled out of stones and causing time travel. 14 years, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I'm talking all that stuff. I haven't played any of the recent Zeldas, but I remember the old days N64, baby. Ocarina uh, so yeah. of Time. Ocarina. Uh, get the guy playing the Ocarina. Do, 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 yeah. do, 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 Still remember it. Yeah. Navi. Hey, Navi. listen hey, this way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good. Get get her on the big screen, baby. I'll be down. I'll be there day one, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Um, get Aqua so yeah. to voice her. How great would that be? Yeah. It's the dream scenario. <laughs> yeah. quack, quack, quack. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> yeah. Navi is uh, hilarious. Some some <laughs> yeah. Some studios have done that though. And look, look how it turned out. Is there no well? Um, but China's racist. Yeah. Always. So will chat will it do well in China? It's kind of the barometer. Is China racist about Link? <laughs> Can I see it's uh, it's a hit a bit like they go from week to week. Being like, oh this come on guys, I think we need to tone the racism down a bit over here. We better go see the Little Mermaid 2 this week to me. They're on to us <laughs> over in America. We need to go see that movie. Social experiment to see if China's yeah. racist. We just need to determine like oh, do we do we have to be threatened by China's racism or not? I we're gonna get yeah no. we're gonna get suspected to be like Chinese plants now, um <laughs> trying to promote the the great communist state, um so yeah I I think it'll be good I mean it's but I do worry with this as well that because one's done well that they're now gonna just start green lighting every yeah. single Nintendo yeah. property and I feel like they're gonna take the wrong way <laughs> like Iggy's wrecking balls yeah, yeah. Buck Bumble. Just Kirby. Get, get it all out there. Just get all the yeah, every single yeah. But it would yeah. be cool if they did get to like some Super Smash Brothers. I I feel like the NCU is something they totally could be pulled off from years ago. It's something that we've all just hmm. there, there's several different ways they could, you know, have them ultimately collide in some way. Um, and I think Mario yeah. builds that up pretty well. Uh, but it would be cool if we got to, I mean, even like Samus for Metroid Prime, like how cool would that oh, be if they did a, yeah, Metroid. a, a space be such movie a good of movie. it? Ugh, there's, they, they have something golden on their end. I just don't want them all to be funny. I, like, yeah, <laughs> I want to just don't make it like, like if you do Donkey Kong, yeah, carry over what you did with Super Mario. That, that makes sense to me. Um, but I'm not going to say don't make it all animated. Because I do like animation, but what I would say is, you know, change the kind of style of animation of stuff. Love Death and Robots. There's some great, mm -hmm. almost photorealistic episodes in there. And I think a Metroid set to look like that would be incredible. You can kind of look at the cutscenes for these games, and that almost gives you the style of what to go with, yeah. I think. Like Mario works well as the sort of Pixar animation thing. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I think. You know, look at the cutscenes for Metroid. They're quite photorealistic. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, do that, you bitches. Well, that's all we got on on the on the agenda today, Paul. Do you do you have anything else you want to close us out? No, go go watch the Terminator breakdown I just did. That's doing quite well. It's a Very great surprised breakdown. actually. It's a great breakdown. It's the really? bloody best. It's the bloody best. It's a great one. Uh, so yeah, go check that out, please. And um, we've got the Flash breakdown coming out this week be mm -hmm. talking about that talking about what happened with michael keaton originally which we've already talked about in this uh, black mirror we're going to try and do extraction 2 
going to be talking about it all. It's going to be a busy week for us guys. What about you, Greg, baby? Uh, well, baby Paul, my week is the same coverage as yours. <laughs> I feel like... So uh, competing with each other. Uh, no, I mean, we're very different, you know? People want to see me be like, oh my God, this Black Mirror episode's creepy. <laughs> this is how crazy it is. And I got to do like five videos. I'm, I'm assuming your Black Mirror video is going to be all five episodes, right? Like I got to do five separate videos. <laughs> No, I might be doing five separate videos really? and just drag you it out until months. Secret Invasion. Smart. Not wow. in a day. Yeah. No, I mean, little. just do like yeah. post one a day. Damn. That's crazy. Extraction 2, I'm really excited for. I feel like that was made for yeah. channels like mine <laughs> to, to just talk about. I, I love my favorite part of the review parts of it, but there are, what, there are certain parts where I'm like, yeah, I hear there's like a 16 minute one or in that movie. And I go, that's what reactions were made for right here. Check yeah. that kind of oh. shit out. <gasps> <laughs> I love one as I know. Yeah, uh, oh, as gimmicky as they are, I'm a sucker for them. Uh, they they sometimes they are super gimmicky, but as they sound like, look at it, it's cool. It's all one shot, even if it's yeah, not grabs real. your attention. Yeah, keeps you engaged as well. You feel like you're in the scene. It's very immersive. Yeah, I, I love them. And for a 16 minute one, it's gonna be probably be exhausted by the end of it. You probably feel like you've had the crap beat out of you. Daredevil. That that prison escape one of they did in that yeah absolutely brilliant and by the end of it I, I was like feel like I've just had the crap kicked out of me yeah so I love uh, yeah I, I feel like it makes you go through the experience yourself it's it's sort of like playing a video game in that you kind of you're you feel like you're in it and you know if you yeah. manage to do something it feels like an achievement so I love them oh the 19, one hour in body man. Yeah, 1917, brilliant. There's, yeah. there's bits where he's running in that, and you're kind of like, just keep running, mate, keep mm -hmm. running. Because with it being one shot as well, you kind of feel like it's almost like life, like you're yeah. a, a part of it. And if he dies in the film, it's like, oh, crap, I'm going to die in real life as well. Yeah. But he just managed to make it out. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 does an amazing one. Mm -hmm. um, Children of Men was when I really started paying attention yes. to them. They, yeah. they do some incredible ones in that. Uh, yeah, there's loads of great movies. Revenant. I might has go watch 1917. Yeah, that. there's a lot of great movies. Yeah, Revenant. Some movies here to break down, some classic movie breakdowns. See? I'm mm -hmm. good for today. Hey, look, Paul, we did it. We, we're just a tad over an hour. We did it. First time. Yeah. We're, we're making progress. I've just noticed how, how shiny my face looks as well. I promise it's not this shiny in real life, you know, guys. Every episode I come in, I look really shiny. It's because I'm wearing suntan lotion, yeah? Because the, the first episode, people are talking about my, my sunburn, and then I've so I've started putting suntan lotion on, but now it just makes my my skin look really, really shiny. So apologies again, guys. Yeah, hopefully you're listening to it audio. Uh, yeah. So thanks a lot for checking us out. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can subscribe to us on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Amazon Music, across the Spoilerverse podcast. And we love you guys, and thank you for all your support. We made it episode three. So Will we be back next week? We'll leave you on that cliffhanger. Goodbye. Bye-bye.